What an amazing outreach to our, all our volunteers. We thank you for serving. Hi Church, shall we arise for the service? You know, the Bible says in Psalms 118, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it this evening. Indeed, let us rejoice in the Lord and praise Him before our hearts. Let's give God a big hand. Hallelujah.
Let's praise God with a brand new song today. There's power found in the song of the saints. Whenever we get it in faith, He is the throne upon our praises. Rise up, people of God, come alive. Come on. Burn with a passion and fire. Now is the time to live our voices. Shout for our God will make a way. Right where there seems to be no way. There's nothing He can do. He's the God of the breakthrough. Sing together. There's power in the praise, power in the praise, power in the praise of Jesus. There's power in the praise, power in the praise, power in the praise of Jesus. Wash the shackles, turn to dust, wash the darkness, turn and run. Favor us with over.
have every reason to praise you. We have every reason to worship you. Because you are a big and mighty God. Jesus. So worthy, so worthy to be praised. Love your presence, God. of the Lord and not know what time it is because time stood still and bodies were healed Families restored because we stay here in the presence of the Lord. No one had to say a word. Give up everything for this treasure I found. I never wanted to end. Worship you. So I say, stay. I don't want you to go cause my heart is burning in your presence Lord please stay don't want you to go I don't want you to go Cause my heart is burning In your presence, Lord Lift up holy hands and say I know what it's like of the Lord and not know what time it is because time stood still and bodies were here
says draw near to God and he will draw near to you cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your heart you double minded church this verse says if we want to have a deeper experience with God we first need to draw near to him that means we determine how close we want to get to God we decide the closeness we determine our affection toward God. We have to be the one that draw near to Him first. Something happens when we draw close to God. Situation that seems impossible become possible. In an instant, faith will arise and one touch from God will change everything because all things are possible through Christ who strengthens us. Yeah. Draw close to Him. Have a touch. Touch the presence of God tonight. So let us not 
once stay at the outer core, draw near to Jesus at the deeper level. Let our heart burn with the fire of worship. Let it be a cry in our heart to say that, Jesus, I want more of you. I'm hungry. I want more of you. More of you and less of me. so welcome here in this place. You are here to give us more. Lord, when we are down and out, when we feel it's a dead end, today, Holy Spirit, you're going to give us fresh vision and dreams from heaven. There is always something more that you are, to do in our, you are doing in our lives. Lord, it's not the end. Lord, this problem that we are facing is not the end. This failure that we are encountering is not the end. Because always with the Holy Spirit, 
I will have more. I will experience more. Greater things are ahead of us. Greater things are ahead of us. There is always something great, something bigger. No eyes have seen and no ears have heard what you, Holy Spirit, have been stored for each and every single one of us. Father, today, lift us up from our depression. Lift us up, Lord, from our hopelessness. Lord, we will see always, there is always a future ahead of us in the name of Jesus. Why don't we just lift up our hands? That's right, clap your hands, all you people. Tell Jesus, tell the Holy Spirit. We want more of you, Holy Spirit. Lift up your hands and worship Him. Shigiri alabasodara. Come on, City Harvest Church, open your eyes. God will give you fresh vision, dreams. No failures is never final. No failures is never fatal. God always, always has something great in store for us. Lift up your hands, open your eyes, and see. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you for your presence here in this place. Thank you, Lord, that you always do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or imagine. Father, we can always plan our ways, but it is you, Lord, that will always direct our path. And that's what we want to approach our service this evening. And that is to allow you, Holy Spirit, to move so freely, so deeply inside our hearts. Let us, every one of us, experience the overflow love of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for your glorious presence here in this place. We love you and we thank you and we want to stay in your presence throughout the day. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Let's give the Holy Spirit a big hand. Come on. Let's give the Holy Spirit a big hand. Let's honor Him for His presence in this place. Let's honor Him. Wherever you are, He's there. All the way behind, all the way at the side. Honor Him wherever He is. Hallelujah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Wow. Woo. Hallelujah. Woo. How many of you can sense the amazing presence of the Holy Spirit? You know what, friends? Let's just continue to stay in this atmosphere, don't joke around, 
because I know that the Holy Spirit is here to do something great and deep inside our heart. Amen. You know, before you're seated, I want you to just turn to your neighbor and tell them the Holy Spirit is here to touch you and tell five people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you may be seated here today in the house of God. Wow. How many of you can sense the anointing and the presence of God here in this place? Amen. Let's give the Holy Spirit one more big round of applause, shall we? Hallelujah. He's such amazing presence here. We want to welcome those of you who are here for the first and second time in here in our midst. You're so very welcome to our church and um, we want to honor you as well. We want to thank you for your presence here. And as you stand up, when we count to three, we want to properly welcome you because the ushers will give you a welcome card and uh, you can take that welcome card, scan the QR code. There are many great information that you want to know about our church and use that welcome card after the service. You can approach at our hall at the 605 over here on my right hand side and uh, you can exchange that welcome card for a nice handcrafted coffee on the house uh, that is our simple gesture to tell you thank you for your time thank you for coming here into the house of God so if you are new here for the first or second time please stand up and don't be shy and uh, let's give all these new friends a big hand and our visitors all right one two three let's give all our friends a big hand let's give them a big hand hallelujah that's right Amen. Come on, let's give them a big hand. Go and shake their hands. Go and reach out to them and tell them so welcome here to City Harvest Church. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, also here in our midst, we just want to especially welcome a special guest coming all the way from Surabaya, Indonesia. And uh, they are wonderful pastors. They are senior pastors of the New Life Church in Surabaya. And uh, they are actually a power couple, celebrity pastor couple. Amazing. We want to welcome here in our midst Pastor Irwan Alexander and his beautiful wife Jessica. Let's give them a big hand. Senior pastors from New Life Church, Surabaya. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, turn to your neighbor and tell them, let's continue to stay in God's presence. Thank you, Pastor Aris. Amen. What a wonderful presence of God here in this place. Now, today, finally, it is the last day of the whole Lunar New Year celebration. You know something, in the last 15 days, this word fu are uh, in Chinese. You can see that word commonly, you know, in every household. And this word fu is usually inverted. Now, because whether you are a Christian or not a Christian, we all recognize that the blessings really comes from above, from the divine. So the key to living a blessed life is really the blesser. And we believe that God is the blesser. Now, if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 2, it says over here, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. You know something? You know, we Christians believe that the blessings don't come upon you just because you shout the loudest in doing the low hating, right? The blessings don't come upon you just because you have the lion's dance troupe, you know, making a performance in your house or in front of your shop, the Bible says, the scripture says that all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you because you have obeyed the voice of the Lord your God. I truly want to believe that in 2024, God's blessing will come upon all of us and overtake us because we have obeyed Him. And today, on this last day of Chinese New Year, shall we obey God all right, in giving our tithes to God, in giving our best offering to the Lord. And in this Chinese New Year season, as we give our Ang Pao's, I realize one thing. The closer the relationship, the bigger the Ang Pao's. How many of you feel close to God today? Are you ready to give big to God? Amen. Well, there are various ways of giving to the Lord. You can give by cash, by credit cards, checks made payable to City Harvest Church. You can also scan the QR code on the screen or right in front of your seat. All right, so using the uh, pay now uh, options, so you can go to our CAC app also to give. Now, our offering envelopes are also available in the seat in front of you. Or if you are sitting on the first row of every section, the envelopes is actually right under your seat. All right, so are you ready to give to the Lord? Come, let's just pray right now. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Father, we want to thank you for such a tremendous time of worship. And today as we come before you, we know that all blessings comes from you alone. Not because we've done, you know, those things culturally, but because we have obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. We want to obey you, God, by giving our tithes. And we want to love you by giving our offerings. We ask that you will bless this offering as we give to you willingly and joyfully. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen. Well, praise God. Just take some time to prepare yourself to give to, to God. So as the ushers start passing the offering on, uh, bucket down each row, so if you're giving by cash, you can you know, put the cash inside the envelope, drop it in the, in the box in a bucket so well praise God those of you that are watching online please join us to give to God as well God loves a cheerful giver praise God Bernard I believe you are somewhere Pastor thank you thank you much Pastor hi church I'm here to give the announcements very long announcements but I shall do it in double quick time first of all to all our young adults our first YA meeting is happening this year this year, this month on the 1st of March, very soon, this coming Friday at 8 p.m. Everybody say 8 p.m. Our YA community is a wonderful place to build relationships with others and in, who are in the same season in our lives. So Pastor Kong will be sharing the Word of God and we will be giving updates on the upcoming YA retreat in KL. I'm sure you'll be all very excited about that. So please join us for dinner at 7 p.m. and the meeting will begin at 8 p.m. So get ready for a night filled with the presence of God. Amen. Secondly, I'm here to tell you that next weekend, Pastor Jeffrey Rahma will be here with us to preach at our services. Pastor Jeffrey is the founder and senior pastor of Jakarta Praise Community Church and he'll be speaking at our Indonesian service next Sunday on the 3rd of March at 1.30pm at Sunday Hall 606 Theatre. So, please bring along your Indonesian friends to join us. Bawa Satu Telman. Bring one friend. Turn to your neighbor left and right, look at them, Abba, Abba, and say, Bawa Satu Terman. That means bring one friend, huh? but you can bring dua, tiga, also. Bagus, huh? Okay, next weekend is Holy Communion Weekend. As we partake communion, we remember that all, all that Jesus has done for us and we live in His grace. So, those of us who are joining online, we encourage you to prepare your communion elements and join us together as we partake together in this special moment. Next up, an exciting announcement to all tertiary students. Rave Camp is back. Make some noise! Amazing. If you are studying or going to study in one of the polytechnics or ITE colleges, join us from the 10th to the 12th of March, Sunday to Tuesday. And I tell you, Rave Camp, it is amazing because I am from Poly, a little bit biased, hallelujah. But I tell you, camp fees are $40 for full campus and $30 for partial campus. I don't know what partial campus means, but $30 for partial campus or for new friends. Register by scanning the QR code over there, hallelujah, or you can head to chc.org slash emerge. And our friendly admins at Hall 605 will assist you if any questions, any burning questions you want to ask, uh, about the camp fees and other, other stuff. Freshies who have just entered Poly or ITE, connect with us and find out more about CHC EPIS community. Hallelujah. Still, two more announcements. Bear with me, okay? Cell group leaders, PCGLs, CGCs, and all staff in preparation for Easter, we will be having a special training session with Pastor Kong on the 19th of March, 8 p.m. right here in our main hall. This training will teach you how to minister to members during ministry time. Food and fellowship will start at 7 p.m. So be sure to mark that date down. Everybody say, 19 March. Okay, last but not least, my final announcement, and I should be out of here. Uh, if you have uh, Chinese-speaking family or friends, please invite them to our Chinese service with Pastor Kong on the 3rd of March, 10 a.m. at Hall 606 Theatre. So do stay back for lunch after. What wow, the date is amazing. Sun, sun, 3rd of March, okay? As such, Hall 601 hangout area on your right will be temporarily closed next weekend as it'll be used for lunch gathering. But Hall 605 will still be available to all members. Now, for all, to all our dedicated volunteers who are serving that weekend, rest assured, Volunteers Lounge will still be available and there will still be Oh Chunky, hallelujah. We appreciate you and want you to have a very comfortable space to have a well-deserved break. That's all I have for you. Please give a big round of applause. Pastor Kong.
Praise the Lord. You know, one of the key foundational pillars of our church is Church Without Walls, or CWW. Since 1996, we have taken the love of Jesus outside the four walls of our church, and Sun and I, we call it CWW. Now remember, when we actually, as a church, reaches out to the poor, Christ is formed in us. So this evening, our CWW team wants to give us a brief report of their progress. Can you please welcome Pastor Eileen and some of the CWW ICs. Give them a big clap as they come right now. Hello. Please give it up Hi. for Pastor Eileen. For <laughs> <laughs> oh, your church. really Chinese New Year yeah. outfit. <laughs> Last day yeah. of Chinese New Year. Yeah, <laughs> Pastor Eileen is like the Mother Teresa of City Harvest Church. Eh? Not Eileen anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I just want to... I didn't say that, you know. That's what you said to me. I'm just repeating to them what you said to me. You are right, you are I, right. I didn't call you an alien. I call myself alien. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to say that I'm so thankful that last year, uh, by the grace of God, we are able to reach out to 9,632 people in need. And yeah, this thing can only happen because of you. There are 900 over of you and 135 cell groups actually uh, signed up and they came in to help and make a difference. So thank you everybody yeah, for serving. Amen. So grateful to all of you. Yeah. yeah. 900 over volunteers. Yes. And how and many cell 135 groups? cell groups. 135 cell groups. Yeah. Thank you. Will you turn to your neighbours and say thank you so much for serving. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. And we are here to share some wonderful testimony and one of the things that happened last year uh, uh, special things that happened was that we actually went to visit many people from uh, one to two room flat and our, the families that we know and the children that we know that stays there we got our cell groups that uh, you know that among us they signed up and then they went to the one to two room flat and reached out to all of them with groceries with vouchers and with the love of Christ and I was personally very blessed because I went for a few groups and I saw a lot of young ones even the 13 years old the 14 years old and also of, of course there are also the elderly ones that came in whatever you know they just make an effort to reach out and then when we went to the went to the house, some of them they were so open. They asked for prayers. They asked for listening ears. I remember there was this uh, Stephanie. He, she actually went in and uh, uh, to this Vietnam family and then they, they just pour out their heart somehow and share about their issues and she, they have a, a kid with uh, special needs, uh, autism and then they just cry and then we, we get a chance to minister to them. Wow. So we are very thankful and uh, some of them actually even of, uh, want to come back to, even want to come to our church yeah. event and they got saved and they love God and I'm so glad that they are here to join us as a community that this is a community for them. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, yeah. Pastor Eileen. Thank amen, you. Amen. Amen. Don, what's happening? Pastor. Your side. Okay, Pastor. Uh, City Home. City Home is about uh, fostering. And uh, so, uh, fostering is not adoption. It is providing a temporary home environment mm. for troubled children right. until they are ready to uh, reunite with their birth families. So, um, it is it's, a, it's known that children grow best in a home environment. Well, yeah. So this is what fostering is about. So last year, in our, through our recruitment, uh, we had a couple, uh, Adrian and Jane, and uh, they Adrian signed and up. Jane. Yeah, so they signed up to be foster parents and they went through 10 weeks of uh, intensive training by MSF. And last year, they uh, fostered a two-month-old baby. So when they fostered the baby, um, the whole cell group came together to support them. And I bought them a year's supply of diapers. <laughs> and amazing. a lot of people started to um, bless them with free baby items. Wow. So and uh, to, to, to date, the baby is uh, seven months old. Yeah. And uh, the whole cell group has come together to support them. <laughs> Two families in the cell group signed up as uh, private respite carers wow. to help take care of this foster baby. Wow. Yeah, so in Singapore statistics, um, in 2012, um, there are 311 foster uh, children. Uh, 2022, 540. So the wow. number increases every year. Wow. And uh, we need more foster wow. parents. Wow, thank you so much. That's so amazing. Dawn is doing a great job. Come on, let's give it up for Dawn and her team. Amen. Come. Little Catherine, tell us. 
Okay, Pastor. So for us, we did the blessing project. As the name suggests, we went around blessing different ones. So other than birthday celebrations that we did, um, the blessing project volunteers actually, you know, visited mm -hmm. and also fulfilled the wishes of 39 terminally ill patients. Wow. And one of these, you know, wait, patients. Wait, you have 39 terminally ill uh, patients and they and have they certain wishes. Yes. So during Christmas last year, yeah. we actually fulfilled all 39 of them. You know, and so one of these patients is named M. She's a 17-year-old girl who suffered from a very rare neurological disorder that caused progressive damage to her nervous system. So although when they visited her, she was bedridden and connected to the ventilator, you know, she was actually very happy and excited when she saw Nancy and the other volunteers visiting her. Wow. So from what we heard is that, you know, she was able to blink her eyes and swallow her saliva, which was her only way of communication. Wow. And what made this visitation even more uh, extra meaningful was that about three weeks ago, you know, M actually passed on to be back with the Lord. So, you know, we were very privileged that we were able to fulfill her last Christmas wish. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I want to ask you, did she receive the Lord? Yes. So, uh, since two years ago, her, her, she and her mother and her sister, actually they have been watching service online wow. because they have not been able to come because they need to look after her. Wow. So, it was very touching. So, she's with the Lord now. Yes, definitely. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give Kat and her team a big hand. Thank you so much. Now it's you, right? Come, 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 come. Tell us, Agnes, what's happening? Okay, for our Meals with Love outreaches. Meals with Love, I never heard that one before. Okay, it's an outreach that we reach out to the community of uh, migrant workers. So we have a, work, a group of workers that we reach out to and we have people from uh, Myanmar as well. Wait a minute, they are the domestic helpers, mostly. Yes, majority. Wow, so this is a new ministry. Uh, yes. So how many ministries we have now? Um, 17. Seven, turn to our neighbour say 17 ministries. Okay, okay. Right. Yeah. So for most of the workers uh, here, their constant worries and fear is always about the family safety. All right. So uh, what happened is uh, last year, one of the workers could not reach her family. Oh and she realized that actually um, they, were, uh, they died tragically. All right. Yeah. And uh, so she was very shaken and uh, very grieved over the sudden loss. So we prayed for her and uh, we actually gave her a love gift uh, to send back to her family. And she was so touched by our love for her. And uh, she knows that over here in Singapore, she is supported by us and that she knows that she's not alone here. Yeah. Amen. Thank you Amen. so much. How many of you have domestic helpers at home? Put up your hands. Yeah. So they too need the love of the Lord. And we could be the only Christians they ever meet. So let's just keep on loving them. Let's give Agnes a big hand. Thank you so much. Amen. Pastor. Here come our super excited brother. <laughs> Hi, Pastor. Uh, on November the 5th last year, we yeah. organized a superheroes theme carnival. And uh, we do this to reach out to over 2,500 low-wage migrant workers, Pastor. Yeah. And we're just so uh, blessed. I think what was so touching uh, was the fact that, uh, our, that we put up a special drama in Tamil, Pastor. In Tamil? In Tamil. And, uh, you know, it was both touching as well as very engaging. And of course, you know that this is good quality because this was put up by our City Harvest Drama Ministry. Hallelujah. Our, our team church went ministry there. did a Tamil drama. Yes. Yes, Pastor. If I remember correctly, Sandy, we didn't have drama on Christmas. So you did drama for them, but we didn't do drama for us. Everybody go, oh. but it's okay for migrant workers, yeah. for the poor and needy. Let's do it. Let's do it. Forget about doing for us. Do it for them. I mean, let's give Sandy and Jacelyn and all the team a big hand. Thank you so much. Yeah. But so it was so touching. It was so engaging that we actually saw many of the workers actually lifted up their phones, right? Not to record, but to actually live stream it back to their family's wow. home. Live stream, Pastor, because they were so touched. And, and, and one of the workers actually came up to us and said that he came because he wanted to get the goodie bags <laughs> or he wanted to get the gifts at the end of the carnival. Yeah. But he said at the end of the carnival, he received the best gift of all, and that is the gift of Jesus. Wow, Amen. that is so yes. wonderful. 
So Amen. when we gave the altar call for healing as well as for salvation, many, many of these brothers, Pastor, lifted up their hands and said yes to Jesus. Wow. Amen. So, Thank you so much. That's amazing. Let's give Thank Johan you, and the team a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Pastor, we also have the nurturing circles. They, these are the ministries that's helping the young unwed mom. And uh, last year, they actually organized a, a outing for them at the zoo. And you know, the many of the unwed moms they are they are so lost and they have never get a chance to go out. So these volunteers went in to get a chance to carry their babies, you know, uh, buy them lunch and get, let them have a time to relax. And in the midst of all that, they found out that uh, there was this girl, 17-year-old unwed mother who has... Uh, 17 years 17, old. 17 years old. And, and she she's has, a mother. Yeah, one-year-old child. And they found out that her house is like a one-room flat, very cramped and uh, very badly furnished and all that. So the team actually uh, came to get the CWW financial assistance to come in to help and also help Pastor Ming Hao, the City Outlook came in to furnish the place and to help the whole entire family. And uh, by the grace of God, during the Christmas, they even came to church, the whole group of them, like the mom, the grandparents and all that, and they gave their hearts to Jesus <laughs> also. <laughs> yeah, Amen. Thank, yeah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. She's very nervous because I keep telling her we are helping people with no strings attached. Correct. So, you know, and so she's, she's almost apologetic to tell me they all got saved. But I'm very happy. Are you all happy they all received Christ? Amen. Yeah. Amen. We are very, very happy, Eileen. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, this time around, uh, we have, uh, we are here because we are doing our next recruitment this year. For the whole are, year, right? Yes, for four months only. Oh, actually. four months. Yeah, so much. Turn your way. neighbors and say four months. Yeah. Yes, and there are many ministries out there, no more than just the one that's on the stage. So we want to encourage you to go in and uh, find a ministry to be a part of it. We're looking for 400 volunteers and 20 cell group only. And I know you only can Only 20 it. cell groups? Only 20 cell groups. Last year, how many? Last year, uh, 135 cell groups. 135. This year, only 20. This is a year of rest. <laughs> I told you. Why you laugh like that? Yes, I told you. Every time I say it's year of rest, they, all my stuff, they laugh, you know. It's, it's only 20. 20. Come on, you, you tell your cell group leaders. You say, this year, let's be involved in it. Yeah. yeah. After the you. service, find your cell group leaders and tell them, let's get involved. Only 20 cell group. How many volunteers? 400. 400. Be one of the 400. Yes. Yeah, be one of the 400. Make a difference in somebody's life. Eileen, I just want to ask you something. Do we yes, still have master. the care fund nowadays? Yes, we have. We have C CWW. It's care fund. Financial that means we assistance. have financial assistance. And this is open to all. Yes. Even people who are not members of our church. Even people who are non-Christians. Yeah. So if you have people that have needs, financial needs, please get them to come and see the team over here. We want to help. God has blessed us. We want to be a blessing to others. How many of you are glad what CWW is doing? Amen. Yeah, let's give them all a big hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, guys. Let's all stand on our feet. I want you to go five other people. Tonight is the last night. Uh, we can wish Chinese New Year, Chop Gome, tonight. So I want you to tell somebody Happy New Year and sign up for CWW. Tell them that. Happy New Year and sign up for CWW. <laughs> Please be seated. Amen. <laughs> you know, throughout church history, the last verse of 2 Corinthians has been called the benediction. Or literally, benediction means the blessing, the well wishes. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Don't go back yet. This is not a benediction. <laughs> Tonight, I want to talk to you about knowing the love of Father God. And this is a very important truth that is central to the gospel. Paul's daily prayer to the Ephesians, and of course to us, is that we will be rooted and established in love. 
not in duty, not in law, not by pressure, but rooted and grounded in love. But the love of God can only be known and experienced by revelation. A revelation of how wide, how long, how high, how deep is that divine love. Because having that revelation will determine the extent you will be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. More importantly, this was Jesus' final prayer for us, knowing the love of the Father. If you can, turn with me to John chapter 17, and this is right after the Last Supper. Jesus was all by himself in the upper room, praying alone. And here, it says in John 17, the last two verses, verse 25, Righteous Father, though the world does not know you. Notice, Jesus calls God Father. Everybody say, Father. Father. Do you know how many people struggle to do that? <laughs> to relate to God as Father can be very uncomfortable, scary, especially when there are deep pains and emotional wounds that are unresolved in their hearts. How can you relate to someone you don't even know what he's like? Or if you have a distorted image of who he is, how to build a relationship with a person like that? You need a revelation of what Father God is like. Turn to somebody on your left and right and say, you need revelation. <laughs> you need Jesus and the Holy Spirit to break through all the misconception the wrong cultural ideas, the wrong family ideas, sometimes even the wrong church ideas of what your heavenly Father is like. Without revelation, there's no way you can build a relationship with Him. And this is why so many of you are stuck. You're stuck because your understanding about God is stuck. <laughs> I told you last week, if your knowledge of the Bible is only like this, you will always be like this. You can't build deep intimacy with Him. The concept of Father means God is the source. One English translation says it like this. Can we all read John 5 verse 26? This is from, the, from God's Word translation. Let's all read together. The Father is the source of life, and He has enabled the Son to be the source of life too. So Father implies the source. He is the source of life. He is the source of love. He is the source of your identity. The more you know Him, the greater your self-worth. You know who you are. I have a Father. Father is the source of your provision, the source of your protection. The more you know Him, the greater your sense of security. He's a supporter. He's a promoter. He's the source of wisdom and guidance. The more you know Him, the more you discover significance and purpose. Without a father, you become very vulnerable because there's no source to draw from. There's no one here for me. I'm all on my own. There's no one to help me, no one to protect me, to provide for me, no one to guide me. No one to train me, to prepare me, to support me, to empower me to go forward in life. You will feel very insecure, vulnerable. If you have no father, there's no one to represent you, to stand up for you. So you must fight for yourself. Have you ever heard people say that? I gotta fight for myself. Who's gonna fight for me if I don't fight for myself? So, you have to act on your own behalf, for your own interests. If there's no one to promote you, then you end up promoting yourself. And you see a lot of self-promoters out there. If you have no father, there's no sense of purpose or direction. So you feel lost. You struggle to find fulfillment in life, to satisfy the emptiness in your soul. You have a hole in your soul. 
So you try to find fulfillment from people, from things, to get attention, the approval of others. Look at what I own. Look at what I have. I got the latest iPhone. I got the latest Samsung. I have the latest car, the latest Tesla, the latest BYW, uh, BYW, BYD. <laughs> Look at how I dress. Look at my expensive watches, my bags, my shoes, my accessories. You become very driven, high strung. So you don't experience peace and rest because you're always worried about success, about achievements all the time, all the time, all the time. You're like an app running in the background that cannot stop. So even when you sleep, you're worried, you wake up, you feel so tired. You can become very competitive and very jealous of other people's success. So you're always comparing yourself with others. All this can get very tiring and very frustrating. And no matter what you achieve, it will never be enough. You will still never be happy. And this is why God has a heart for the fatherless. I, I love this verse. It says over here, where is the verse? I, Psalm 68 and verse five. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. He wants you to know him as your heavenly father. Amen. As wonderful as our natural fathers are, they are unable to fully represent God for what he's really like. Now, we have received many good things from our earthly dads, but we also have received many distorted things because none of them is perfect, because they have their own weaknesses and their own brokenness. Many of our fathers might be hot-tempered and stern. Some of you grew up with abusive dads who shouted at you, beat you up, vent their frustrations at you. Many young boys accidentally found the secret stash of daddy's pornography or caught them watching porn. It shocked them greatly. My hero, doing this. And they themselves become addicted to porn. Many dads are distant and cold, very performance-oriented. Years ago, we had a girl from a top school in Singapore. She had seven A's and one B, and her dad blasted her, expressed his disappointment that she didn't get all straight A's. This is a very common story for so many people here in Singapore. I know a young man whose dad was a very successful businessman. And even as a boy, he could never go straight to his room to talk to him like that. He had to make an appointment before he could see his own daddy face to face because his dad wanted to teach him that this is how the real world functions outside. Sometimes our natural parents, our natural fathers, they are not with us. My own dad lost his father when he was only six years old. So he never experienced the love of a father until he became a Christian when he was almost 70 years old. Let's just look at Jesus' prayer again. Jesus' prayer, John 17 and verse 25. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you. Now this word know means to be intimately acquainted with someone. Having experiential knowledge, not just hate knowledge, not just knowing by what you read, but you have experienced him. Amen. Jesus has very intimate knowledge with his heavenly father, and he came to reveal who God is like. This is the big deal, because until Jesus came, people didn't really know that God is a very kind and tender-hearted God that he's a very loving father. This was something nobody knew. They called him Almighty God, the sovereign creator, the ancient of days, the most high God, the Lord most high, the God of armies of angels. So they knew he's powerful. He's great, he's mighty, he's holy, 
but they never knew his heart, that he is love, that God is love. And this is the real, real reason why Jesus came, to tell the whole world that God is your loving Father. Turn to your neighbors and say, God is your loving Father. Yeah. Do you know the Old Testament called God Father only four times? Only four times. But the moment Jesus came, God is called Father over 250 times. This revelation transformed the entire New Testament and shapes every part of what it means to be a Christian. The fatherhood of God. The fatherhood of God. The fatherhood of God. Yes, He's your Savior. He's your healer. He's your provider. He's your deliverer. He's Jehovah Nissi, your banner, your victory, your deliverer. Yes to all that. But you never experience Him as the Father of love. You have missed the real, real reason why Jesus even died on the cross. Without this revelation, without this experience, your salvation is superficial, cold, mechanical. Jesus knows the Father very well. No one has seen Him, but only the Son, who dwells in the bosom of the Father closest to him, John chapter 1, verse 18. Jesus is the express image of Father God, Hebrews 1, verse 3. He perfectly represents Father. Jesus looks exactly like him. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father, Jesus says. Some people think God is angry all the time. The other day I went to social media and I was scrolling, and I saw an IG, and this preacher, he was saying, God is angry all the time. As if he can't wait to judge people, judge cities and nations for their sins. If you think God is like that, then you become like that. You become a very angry person. Whenever you feel people don't live up to Bible standard, you want to judge them. You want them condemned. You want them punished. You know, one time Jesus and his disciples came to Samaria. The people weren't open to him. James and John got so upset, so angry, so angry. They wanted to call down fire from heaven to punish the Samaritans. But that's not God's heart. Jesus refused to be offended by the Samaritans. You see that? Jesus had zero anger. <laughs> Turn to your neighbors, do this action, say zero anger. <laughs> But you know, today so many people are like James and John. So many Christians are like that. Oh, God is angry with sinners. He's gonna judge this place. He's gonna burn down this place. He's gonna punish it. Guys, we are not like that because we are Pentecostals. We look at life through the lens of God's love. And because God is love, He is slow to anger. God is a very merciful and gracious God. That means He's not trying to judge you, to punish you, to destroy your life. He's very patient and He's very long-suffering. He's a very good God. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. He's abounding in loving kindness and very compassionate. What does that mean? That means God is easily moved by your struggles and your needs. If you want to know what God is like, just look at Jesus in the four Gospels. You will find a Savior who says, learn from me, learn from me. I am gentle and humble in heart. Come and find rest for your soul. This is how you rest from all the stress, all the worries, all the frustration. You come into the love of God. You want to know what the Father is like? You see how Jesus treated people. How he treated others when he was happy. How he treated people when he was sad. When he was tired. How he related to broken people. To people who are rich, people who are poor. To the sick, the weak. 
how he treated them when he saw their needs, when he saw them struggling. In Jesus' time, sinners and tax collectors, they were the outcasts of society. Jesus always made them feel welcome and had meals with them. You know, in that culture, eating together is honoring people, valuing others. I, I love it. Bishop Dad came and said, it's so important to honor and to value. That's the culture of the kingdom. Amen. Jesus didn't treat people according to how they lived, yes. but according to the value he saw in them. Amen. We like to judge, criticize people based on what we see or what we hear other people say but not Jesus. He made everyone feel welcome, special, important. He shares the kingdom of God to them and healed them and brought restoration and wholeness to them. He may not agree with their lifestyle, but he always values people. For example, Jesus didn't agree with the lifestyle of the, of the adulterous woman. She was living an immoral life. She was in adultery. Jesus says, look, this is wrong. You're living in sin. But she refused, but he refused to condemn or despise her. Let's go back to his prayer. I want you to see this. John 17, verse 25. Can we all read this, verse 25, 26? Let's all read together, starting now. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them. Amen. Here Jesus is talking about his disciples. He has made God the Father known to them. How many of you, you are a disciple of Jesus Christ? Put up your hands, yeah? What the Father wants is a loving intimacy with us, with you. A deep personal relationship that you can experience his love and enjoy his love, to know how much Father values you, that you can feel very close to him and hear his voice very clearly every day, that he is your father, that he cares about every little detail in your life. And this is what eternal life is all about. Look at John 17 and verse 3. We just go up a little earlier. Let's all read together. The words in bold, three times as loud, starting now. Now, this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Do you see this? This is what eternal life is all about. A relationship with God. It is not about things. It's not about getting blessings. It is about connection, the intimacy you can come into. This is the whole purpose of being saved. Salvation is not a fire insurance to escape hell in the afterlife. Salvation is not a ticket to become rich and famous and live a life of comfort and ease as you pursue your own desires. No, salvation is coming into a loving embrace of your heavenly Father, your source, to have intimate communion with Him and to experience His love. Verse 26, I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. This is the most important part, the last verse of Jesus' final prayer. By the Spirit, Jesus wants to continually give you more and more revelation of your Father. So that the love of Father God, the love that Father has for Him, for Jesus, will be in you. Wow, can you imagine that? Jesus wants us to experience the same love Father God has for Him. This is really, really the climax of the Christian experience. When I have God and His love, I have everything. Turn to your neighbors and say, with love, you have everything. One major issue 
that so many people struggle with is rejection. And the only permanent cure for this, for rejection, is the love of your heavenly Father. If you have a problem with rejection, you will always struggle with it if you don't have a deep revelation and experience of the Father's love. Now, all of us experience rejection once in a while, so that's not a big deal. But when it's more than an emotional distress, and you feel a persistent sadness, a persistent disappointment that doesn't go away, making you frustrated, maybe making you angry, making you constantly feeling lousy about yourself, then you are lightly oppressed by a spirit of rejection. When you are harassed by a spirit of rejection, it affects the way you feel, the way you think, the way you see life, the way you respond to people. There are three things a spirit of rejection does. Number one, a spirit of rejection attacks your identity. Who are you? Who am I? This spirit, this demonic spirit wants to tell you your identity is attached to what you have, your possession, your position, to what people say about you, all those external things. A spirit of rejection will push you to believe your personal value, your self-worth, your identity, who you are, comes from what is outside of you rather than what's, what you are on the inside, that you are a child of God. And if you're always looking for the approval of others, then people have the power to hurt and manipulate you by withholding approval that you need. If you're looking for recognition, suddenly you'll feel very important and happy if people recognize you. But when they don't, if you feel criticized, then life becomes overwhelming. And if you hear something disagreeable, say a word of correction, you will have a meltdown because your identity is not established in God. You are living in bondage to a spirit of rejection. Think about Jesus. The devil's first attack was targeted at his identity. Jesus, if you are the son of God, prove it. Do something to impress people. Come on, Jesus. If you are the son of God, turn the stones into bread. Prove it, impress us. Jump off the pinnacle of the temple. Show the world how great you are. Are you always feel compelled to impress people? How rich, how powerful, how smart, how successful you are? <laughs> Number two, a spirit of rejection distorts how you view life, how you see life. Let me tell you, we seldom interpret life through what we see with our eyes or what we think in our mind. We tend to interpret life through our heart. So if your heart is wounded by rejection because of what has happened to you in your past, you'll view everything through the filter of that wound. Even when people say something nice to you, your heart will tell you, oh, they don't mean it. They don't like me. They don't want me. It may be something very simple. A little disagreement, a little word of correction. Your heart will say, they don't like me. They hate me. They're always against me. Then when you see somebody else being honored or being praised, your heart will tell you, so unfair. Should have been me. You know what? People don't like me here. And you feel discouraged. You're frustrated. You're unhappy. You're angry. You cannot rejoice in what other people are doing. And the spirit of rejection will keep working and working and goring and goring your wound. Just goring it. <laughs> On the wound of rejections in your heart. And cause you to misinterpret people and life. Number three, a spirit of rejection hinders your ability to receive from God. Everything you receive from God, you get it by faith. Everybody say faith. faith. Turn to your neighbors and say, you need to have faith. Rejection 
fills you with unbelief. It makes you think God will only do it for others, but never for you. Well, this is for everyone else, but not for me. With unbelief, you can't move forward. You can't progress to greater things. You can't believe God for your own personal life, for encounters, for revival, for blessings. When I was seven years old, I took part in a coloring contest, primary one. My teacher gave me some instructions as to how all of us should color the drawings. You know, I work on it all day on Saturday, but it was very difficult for me. I, I'm just not good at drawing, coloring, painting. I'm just not the arty kind. Growing up, my dad was my hero. You know, when you're seven years old, your dad is so big and so smart and so great. Nothing was too hard for him. Back then, my father wasn't a Christian. He was very stressed and he had a terrible temper. I said, Daddy, can you please help me with the coloring? I'm not good at this. My dad tried to help, but it wasn't according to what my teacher has instructed. I said, Dad, you can't do it like that. This is not what teacher said, that we should color the drawings. Dad, please, Dad, no, Dad, no, Dad, this is wrong, Dad. My father got so angry and fed up with me, he stood up, took the paper and threw it at my face and walked away. I was only seven years old. But that sense of rejection from an authority figure that I love and respected affected me very, very deeply. From that time, I grew up very afraid to approach my dad for anything. Every year, when I got to give my report card, my hands literally tremble to see him. It also affected how I can have faith to receive blessings from the, from the Lord. Subconsciously, I thought, God is like my father. Fast forward 15 years later, I was at a Christian service, a full gospel businessman convention. I was a youth growing up, praying one day I'll be a pastor of a church. During the altar call, the elderly American preacher, a fatherly figure, gave an altar call. All those who want a touch from God, come down to the front. I went forward and I closed my eyes and I wanted to receive. Then I heard commotion. I look around, people are falling. Boom, 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 boom. People are falling on my left, on my right. I panic. what am I going to do? He came towards me. I think I was so nervous, people falling down on the left, on the right. I wasn't thinking about God. He laid hands on me, I felt nothing. I stood there like a solid rock. I think he got upset, the preacher. He aggressively pushed me to the floor and then walked away. My dad threw the paper at me and walked away. This man pushed me to the floor, walked away. I was so shocked. I felt rejected all over again. I thought to myself, maybe falling down under the power is for others, but not for me. God will never let me have blessings like that. From then on, I could never feel anything during the altar call, and certainly not fall under the power. It is just not for me. Started the church. So now I church, a few hundred people. When I pray, people fell. When others pray for me, nothing happened. One day, a senior pastor friend, much older than me, asked me a question. Kong, why? Why is it you just cannot fall under the power of God? Right then, the Holy Spirit showed me I needed to forgive my dad for his anger outburst for his rejection of me. And I also need to forgive that American preacher who was like a father figure, who pushed me to the floor and walked away upset. That day I asked my pastor friend, after I forgiven them, I said, pastor, can you just pray for me? When he laid hands on me, I was mightily touched by the Holy Spirit, fell on the floor, and wave after wave of God's power wash over me. Hallelujah. Come on, go ahead and give God a big hand. 
Oh, you want to clap? Let's give the Lord a big clap. Hallelujah. It was a heavenly encounter. From that day, I became very open and sensitive to receive the power of God. I wonder how many of you have been asking God for blessings, for prayer answers, and you don't seem to be able to receive it. You've been praying, God, I want to speak in tongues for years. <laughs> Just can't get it. Is it because you think God will reject you? That you are the exception? Others will receive and be blessed, but not you? Three things the spirit of re rejection does. Number one, it attacks your identity. Number two, it distorts how you view life. Number three, it hinders your ability to receive from God. Rejection makes you very lonely. And it fills you with self-pity. It makes you miserable. You feel lousy about yourself all the time. And if you nurse it over and over long enough, it makes you depressed and you feel hopeless. When the bondage becomes very, very serious, you may even start to entertain suicidal thoughts. Nobody loves me. Nobody likes me. I have no future. I'm hopeless. Because life has no meaning. The only cure for rejection is the love of your Heavenly Father. It is the only power that can overcome the spirit of rejection. Tonight, you need to come to the Father and open up your heart to His love. Instead of a spirit of rejection, God wants to give you the Holy Spirit, who is a spirit of adoption. Amen. One last verse, Romans 8 and verse 5. Can we all read this out loud together? Starting now. For you have not received a spirit of slavery, leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons and daughters by which we cry out, Abba, Father. The word Abba means daddy, papa. You feel so close and comfortable with God. You can actually call him Abba, daddy, pa, pa. The Holy Spirit wants to bring you into that very loving and intimate relationship with the Father. Turn to somebody on your left and right and say, you are a son and daughter of God. He wants to heal you of a sense of abandonment and rejection. He wants to make the Father's presence very real and tangible in your life so that you can live every day and you can be very aware, I'm loved. Father God is with me. Father God loves me. Now, let me tell you one last thing. Acceptance is something very spiritual. It's tangible. When it's there, you can feel it. And that's why the Holy Spirit wants to fill us with the Father's love. He wants to heal the wounds of rejection, set you free from the spirit of rejection. Only then you can receive His love and then give His love to others. How many of you tonight want to be touched by God's love all over again? Put up your hands right now. Come on, let's all stand up on our feet right now. Hallelujah. The presence of God is here. The presence of God is here. Come, let's just open our mouth. Just pray in tongues right now. Shudurya la karabaha tadya la karabaha tadya la karabaha da. Shudurya la karabaha tadya la karabaha tadya. Shudurya la karabaha tadya la karabaha. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And so, my.
close. I want every eye to close and every head to bow. Tonight, the love of Father God is here. Tonight, God wants you to experience His love. I wonder how many of you here, while eyes are closed and heads are bowed, you have a childhood trauma. There's some pain and some wound. Maybe there have been abuses, certain shocks that hurt you in your life. I wonder how many of you, there's conflict at home. Maybe there's a divorce, maybe a, there are broken relationships, and maybe you lost your mom, you lost your dad because of the divorce. You know, father and mother together, they form our idea of God. And God wants to heal you tonight. Maybe you have a very controlling dad, a controlling mom. And be people that are controlling, usually they are emotionally cold and distant. Maybe there have been words of disapproval. Maybe they say you'll never amount to anything great. You are a failure. You are a black sheep of the family. We are ashamed of you. And you don't have the intimacy with your earthly dad or mom. I wonder how many of you here tonight, there have been unfavorable, unfavorable comparisons. Oh, why aren't you as smart as your cousin? Why aren't you as smart as your brother? Why can't you be like someone else? I wonder how many of you have terrible experiences in school. Maybe bullying, maybe shaming, or there have been sexual abuses, physical abuses. Maybe you feel rejected. You gave your heart to a man, to a woman, and the person was not faithful to you. You just have the sense of rejection. I will never be loved. I will never find happiness in life. Tonight, are you struggling with loneliness? Tonight, are you struggling with self-pity? Tonight, do you feel miserable every day? Tonight, are you depressed? Or maybe you feel hopeless and you're suicidal. You thought of cutting yourself. You thought of ending your life. Tonight, God brought you here because you come to a new year. He wants to set you free. He wants to pour His love into your heart. The only way you can be cured of a spirit of rejection is when you have the love of the Heavenly Father. Tonight, how many of you say, Pastor, that's me. If that's you, when I count to three, can you just lift up your hands? I close hates about. Tonight, I want to help you. I know this uh, can be a painful thing, but tonight is the night of your salvation. Tonight is the night of your deliverance. If that's you, when I count to three, I want you to lift up your hands. You have a trauma. You have abuses. You feel hopeless. Thoughts of suicide. You carry a spirit of rejection. On the count of three, one, two, three. Lift up your hands right now all over this place. Yeah, straight up, all the place. Yeah, I see your hands going out everywhere. Tonight, we're going to sing this song from the beginning. All those that put up your hands, we want to pray for you. Because tonight, you're going to leave this service totally free, set free. And tonight, the love of God will flood your soul. It will change your life tremendously. So when I count to three, I want all those that put up your hands, come and just form a line. I want all the cell group leaders, come and help me. All the connect group leaders and security, come and help me be catchers tonight. Tonight, we're going to minister to you in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Just come right now. Hallelujah. Just come right now. Just come right now. Just come right now. Let's all sing together. Hallelujah. All the way from the one end to the other end. I said. Pray first. We just worship God first together. Oh Jesus, I said. Don't pray first. Don't pray first. We just worship God together, all right?
just give all these people a big clap? They are just very brave to come forward tonight. Give them all a big hand. Hallelujah. Just look at Pastor for a moment. Just look at me. Or look at the screen. Just see me for a moment. I want to lead you in some steps. Number one, you must know on the cross, Jesus took every rejection on your behalf. Every trauma, every brokenness, every shame, every abuse, every pain. He took it away. So tonight, could you just say this prayer with me right now? Everybody just pray. I want the whole church to pray together. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Tonight I come to the cross. You took my rejection. So that you can give me acceptance. I'm accepted by God. I surrender to you. All my trauma. Every abuse, every, abuse. Every, pain. every pain, disappointment, disappointment. Betrayal. betrayal, every shame, every shame. I, give I give it to you right now. I receive from you, receive from you. The, love the love of the Father. Can you just lift up both your hands? Just begin to thank the Lord right now. <laughs> Let's take a moment, just worship the Lord. Just give it to Jesus. Just give it to Jesus. Just give it to Jesus. Jesus is giving you His acceptance right now. He's giving you His acceptance right now. Hallelujah. Just look at Pastor. Number two, second thing you need to do. You need to forgive all your offender, as many as you can remember. The one that raped you, the one that abused you, molested you, the one that shouted at you, the one that laid a finger at you, that beat you up. You need to forgive your dad, your mom. You need to forgive the one that betrayed you. So I want you to just close your eyes right now. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I want to forgive in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. And, let and let go of every offender, of every offender who, hurt who hurt me. Can you just mention to the Lord the person's name? Lord, I forgive, I forgive, forgive dad, forgive mom, forgive uncle, forgive brother, sister, forgive the teacher, forgive that neighbor. Let's just pray in tongues just a little bit. Just forgive, just forgive. Church, just pray. Everybody just pray right now. Those of you standing, you need to forgive too, right? Not just those in front, but you need to forgive. Let's just begin to pray. Maybe it's a church leader, a pastor, a cell group leader. Just forgive right now. Church staff, just forgive in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Oh, we bless them right now. We bless just bless the person right now. Just learn to bless them. Jesus says, bless your enemy. Lord, I just pray you bless the offender. You bless mom. You bless dad. You bless those who abuse me. Lord, I just pray you bring them to your presence. You save them. You transform their lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at pastor. Third thing you need to do. You must break every agreement with a spirit of rejection. And by that, it means you renounce the rejection. You renounce the thought, I want to die. I'm hopeless. God, you will not bless me. I'm good for nothing. You break the agreement. You say, I don't accept that. I'm a child of God. I'm accepted in the beloved. Can we do that? You just break that agreement. Everybody say aloud with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I'm accepted by you. I'm loved by you. Right now, I receive your love. And I renounce every rejection, every abandonment, every shame, every thought that says I'm not good enough. I reject that in Jesus' name. Just pray in tongues right now. 
Shuturi Allah karabahadi Allah karabahadi Allah everybody praise Shuturi Allah karabahadi Allah karabahadi Allah karabahadi Allah karabahadi Allah karabahadi Allah karabahadi Shuturi Allah karabahadi Allah karabahadi Allah karabahadi Shuturi Allah karabahadi Allah karabahadi Allah karabahadi Lord we just reject that in the name of Jesus Spirit of rejection go in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Shuduri Allah Karabahadri. Pastor Sali, just go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray.
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We, bring we bring every agreement with death in the name of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus. We break the curse of death, we, break the curse of we death. command the spirit of death, we command the spirit of death. Get, out get out in the name of Jesus. Everybody, spray in tongues right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Everybody, pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Suduria la Karabaha, the spirit of death, I command you go in the name of the Lord Jesus. Get out, get out, get out. Go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
praying just one more minute we pray in tongues right now hallelujah how I need your presence, Lord. How I need your presence, Lord. Spirit of hope, draw me closer to you, Lord. Spirit of life, flowing into my Give the Lord a big clap right now. Hallelujah. 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 That's right. Just give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Let me, let me encourage you. You know, wherever there's a manifestation and maybe some of you come for prayer, suddenly you got shocked. How come I'm screaming and all that? It's a good thing. It means those demons, they left. Demons never leave quietly. 99% they leave screaming. That means you've been set free. So let's just give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. So after a session like this, your body is very tired. So tonight, have good fellowship, have a good meal. Go back, have a good rest tonight. Sleep. Tomorrow morning, wake up, spend time, play some Christian music, worship, and just focus on the love of God. That's what I do. That's what I do. Every day, I focus on the love of God. I focus on, on His love for me. What Father has done by sending His Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of love. And just let that love wash you clean. Step by step. After one, two, three weeks, you're going to be strong. The spirit of rejection will never come back again. And you're going to be totally set free in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the place of agreement is a place of power. Why don't you just hold your neighbor's hands? Tonight, let's just make some faith declaration. Everybody say, in the name of Jesus. Tonight I receive the love of Father God. A love that accepts. A love that forgives. A love that cleanses. Tonight, my life is changed. My heart is open to be transformed by God, to be loved by God. Will you pray for our neighbors right now on your left, on the right? In Jesus' name we pray and everyone say, Amen. Let's just give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. 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 So now tonight I can declare the benediction over you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love the incredible, unconditional love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Happy Chinese New Year. But before you go, 
You know, many people, their hearts are very raw because tonight God touched them deeply. Will you give five people a big hug and say, Jesus, I say, don't say Jesus, say, the, fa the Father loves you. The Father accepts you. Will you just do it right now, five people? The Father loves you and accepts you. Hallelujah. God bless you. See you next week.